Now, in creating a DWG file, the primary way to create a DWG file is by exporting or saving a DGN file to DWG format. Um, a common question we get asked uh, sometimes is what is the difference between exporting uh, to DWG and saving to DWG? Well, it's quite simple. Exporting is a process where um, you are maintained in the original DGN file and um, the DWG file is created in the um, location that you um, determine or that you uh, set it to and um, you stay in the original file. Whereas save or saving or save as will save the DWG file and then uh, it will open the newly created DWG file. So that's the only difference, but the same process is taking place. Uh, round tripping. Now, what is round tripping? What well, is is a term that we kind of use? Uh, we, we want users to avoid doing that. Um, this is where you take a DWG file and, and convert it to DGN and, and then maybe for whatever your project or if you're, you know, working with a, a partner, you want to then save, send them back a DWG file. Um, in some instances, it can't be helped, but in, in some instances, you know in advance that the deliverables will be DWG format and maybe you feel more comfortable working in the DGN uh, as opposed to the DWG. Um, we don't see this as much, but sometimes the users still feel inclined to do that. Uh, but we want to warn you against doing that because when you uh, do that, you round trip the file. What you're doing is you're compromising the graphical data in the file. Uh, for example, uh, think of things such as fonts, line styles, blocks or cells. Um, the, the scale, the size, uh, colors can change, line styles can change, and oftentimes, you know, we'll get calls where that has happened and line styles or, or what have you, text styles have been lost. So you might be thinking, I will save the DGN file to avoid these restrictions, but in most cases, uh, uh, try not to do that. Um, you can use this variable MS uh, work mode and set it equal to DWG. This this uh, work mode is set up automatically uh, when working in a DWG file, but you can also uh, set this variable up for working in your DGN files. And then this will apply restrictions uh, that uh, will not allow you to do things that would standardly be available in DGN. Uh, format or the DGN workflow, it will restrict that. And some of these are attaching a reference to a self because there's no uh, self-attachment uh, in uh, AutoCAD. Uh, attaching a custom color table, you know, you have the ability to do that. That would be restricted. And then applying level override symbology, just to name a few things. So just be mindful that you can set that variable to protect yourself and uh, the integrity of your data. So we're going to look at just a couple of the options under um, creating a DWG file, specifically the version, uh, the source of the level display, uh, the units, and using level symbology override. Now, in many cases, an older release of AutoCAD can't open a DWG file that has been saved in a newer release. And this is because Autodesk has routinely changed their version of DWG from every three to four versions, maybe now it's up to maybe every five or six versions. And commonly, you might open a file and it says this file format is not supported. Uh, the screenshot I showed earlier regarding the version command will let you know what version of the DWG file you can open. So a um, couple of things we want to look at is um, we'll look at the version um, and see what the importance of that. Um, we'll look at the source of the level display. Now, the so source of the level display sets the view from which the DGN file is set to uh, display in the DWG file. It's, in, it's important uh, that this is, is set. So I'm going to share my screen and do a live demonstration of this. So here you see I have a, a DGN file, and, I'm, and I've already uh, gone to the Save As uh, uh, dialog, and I'm going to go to Options. Now, uh, as I mentioned before about the versions, the importance of the version um, is if you have, for example, a version of 2017 AutoCAD, 
you will not be able to open a DWG file that's 2018 through 2023. So just like in AutoCAD, you have the, the same ability. You can click here and you can uh, save that DWG file to an earlier DWG format. So um, a common question we get sometimes is why can't I open this DWG file? Well, you may have to look at the, the real DWG version you have in your MicroStation version. And also you have to look at the version of AutoCAD that you have. Uh, in regards to the source of the level display, uh, we'll touch on that in here uh, shortly. But now uh, units, basically our units, we set that to um, set the saving option for the units that we want to have in our DWG file. Uh, so once again, you can set it to the master, to the sub, or you have specific units that you can save it to. And then, um, as I mentioned earlier, level overrides are not supported in DWG work mode when you go to level manager. But by checking this option on, um, you can save the level overrides for your color, for your line style, for your weight, and have that applied to the DWG file that you're creating. So even though you can't do it uh, in a DWG file, you can do it in a DGN file and then save those uh, symbology overrides to the DWG format. Now, as I mentioned before about the version, um, that's important. But uh, an another common issue, that source of the level display. Um, in the demonstration, um, basically, a common question we get is when users try to save to DWG and um, they're not getting the same thing they see in their DGN file. Well, as you know, in MicroStation, there are eight views. And if you have a level that's on in one view and off in another view, then um, that level could be turned on and off when you don't desire it to be. So by setting this source of level display to a specific view, by default, it's set to global, but I would recommend setting it to the view that you're in to get the exact uh, level settings that you require. Another thing that uh, users will often run into if you are saving a uh, DGN to a DWG, if you're merging the references, uh, what happens there is if you have a level that exists in the master file as well as the reference, and that level is off in the reference file, but on in the master file. When that file is saved, uh, the setting copy levels during merge, the default setting is set to if overrides exist. What we recommend that you do is that you set that to always. And what that will do is it will always create a separate level for each of your reference files levels. So you'll get more levels, but that will maintain your level mask or your level on and off settings. That's a very common question that we get asked. So you want to be mindful of that as well. And that setting is done right here, and you just click and set it to always. So let's talk about object enablers. Now, in AutoCAD, the AutoCAD file format allows for several standard object element definitions which are available such as lines, text, etc. Autodesk has allowed application developers to create additional objects, uh, definitions to better suit their application. Uh, Civil 3D is an example, and we'll talk about that. Uh, you may think of them as smart objects or proxy elements or even custom elements. Proxy elements will not display unless the proper object enabler is installed. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.